Hi, in this video we're going to talk about how to estimate square roots. Um, so we have a question here, it says first of all without using a calculator, uh, we have to estimate the values of these square roots and we have to place them on a number line. And we'll actually sort of do those at the same time because the number line will help us think of what values are reasonable and thinking about what values helps us place them on the number line. So our square roots are the square root of 50, the square root of 96, and the square root of 11. Um, so if you understand what square roots mean, some square roots are pretty easy um, to know what the values are. For example, if we had the square root of 16, if you remember that the square root is the number that you'd multiply by itself to get the 16, then you say, okay, the square root of 16 is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. Um, here, some people would look at this and say, oh, 25. If you think that, then you accidentally fell in the little trap, you took half of it instead of the square root. Um, so, but you need to find a number that would multiply by itself to give 50. Um, and actually, there is no whole number that does that. So this is why they're asking us to estimate. Um, it turns out that there's not even an exact decimal number that will do this. Um, so we're just going to try to get close for now to understand approximately how big this is. Okay, so to do this, we are going to think about some of those um, exact square roots. So we'll think about some of our perfect squares. Um, and we're going to make a list here. And I could start by saying, well, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. But instead of writing it like that, I'm going to encourage you, you can do that, but I find people get less uh, mixed up if they write it with a square root sign. So let's start, I'm going to start actually on the third one on the list. I'm going to write down the relationship with, between 3 and 9 with a square root sign. Um, so I could write 3 squared is 9, but I'd like to write actually, instead of writing that, I'm going to write that the square root of 9 is 3. I find it just helps students um, if the sort of the relationship is written the same way as the ones in the question. Okay, um, so 4 is the square root of what? Square root of 16, because 4 times 4 is 16. And then 5 is the square root of 25. And we'll go up to 10. 6 is the square root of 36, 7 is root 49, 8 is the square root of 64, and if you don't have these memorized yet, you should try to memorize them, because it really frees up your brain to think about the harder parts if you know these multiplications. Okay, and I actually just didn't want to start at the very beginning of the list, because Sometimes the, easiest, the smallest numbers are the hardest. Um, 2 is root 4, and 1 is root 1. So we've got our list here. And actually what we're going to do is we're also going to place these on our number line. I've already drawn a number line that goes from 0 to 10. But another way of saying the number 1 is to say root 1. So over top of my um, spot for 1, I'm also going to write root 1. So this is um, just another number name for the same number. And over top of 2, I'm going to write root 4, square root of 4. And over top of 3, I'll write square root of 9, and so on. So I'm just giving each number two different names. And actually, this happens a lot in math, is a lot of the time we can understand things by giving numbers different names. And I might as well, for good measure here, um, 0 is also the square root of 0. Okay, so this bottom number, the bottom name for the number is sort of just useful because it's easy and we absolutely understand what the number 8 is, for example. Um, and the top number is helpful because it's going to help us, we can compare our mystery square roots to these square roots that we already know. Alright. So now, let's finally dive into the question here. I would suggest whenever you're doing a question like this, uh, you have this list nearby. Uh, if it's really, really on the tip of your tongue and it's very easy to write that out quickly, you might not need to write it out. Um, but it's, and it's helpful in memorizing it to practice writing it out as well. Okay, so square root of 50, we need to figure out how big that is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna square, compare it to some other square roots we know, which is this list here. 
And if you look at this list, you might notice the square root of 49, which is really, really close to the square root of 50. And actually, I'm going to kind of highlight these two. Because the square root of 50 is in between square root of 49 and square root of 64. And let's actually just write out that sentence. Square root of 50 is between root 49 and square root of 64. Just because 50 is between 49 and 64. So now we can write that in other words, i.e. That means, in other words, between, so if, square root of 49 is just the number 7, and root 64 is just the number 8. So square root of 50 is between 7 and 8. So that's super helpful now. Um, now I'm going to, we could finish this up with getting a, a sort of an estimate to um, one decimal place, but I want to go down to the picture, um, find a good spot for this number on the number line, and then we'll come back and give it a, a, a more exact estimate. So we know that the root 50 is in this range here. Um, I want to come down to the picture because sometimes it helps if we're trying to figure out like whether root 50 should be real close to here or real close to here or somewhere in the middle. Sometimes it helps to see it. So if I think about the distance between 49 and 50, and then I think about the difference between distance between 50 and 64, it's pretty clear that 49 is a lot closer. Now, interestingly, these the square roots actually aren't spaced out quite the same way that real numbers are, but it's still a good strategy for estimating. So root 50 is going to be really close to root 49. So maybe here? So I'll put root 50 really in close to 7 there. Um, so let's write that, and so it's much closer to 7 than it is to 8. So maybe uh, our estimate for it could be like about maybe 7 and 1 tenth. Because that's quite a lot closer to 7 than it is to 8. Next example, let's look at the root 96. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to compare it to the square roots that I know. And I'm going to try to figure out what is this between of the ones that I know. Um, and here, okay, so 96 is between 81 and 100. So root 96 is between 9 and 10. Let's write that down. So I'm going to write it's between root 81 and root 100 i.e., that means, in other words, between, so root 81 is 9, and 10. So now again, let's uh, slip down to the number line. We want to figure out where would, not, so it's 9, the square root of 96 belongs somewhere between 9 and 10 here. We need to know approximately where would it be. Would it be on this side, or this side, or kind of in the middle? So we think about, um, if we just had 96, and this was 81 and 100, um, between 96 and 81 there are 15, it's a distance of 15, and between 96 and 100 it's only a distance of 4. So this is actually going to be pretty close to this end, maybe here. So root 96 might be about there, quite close to 100. So let's write that down. And closer to uh, 10. So it's closer to root 100, sorry, which is 10. So um, maybe that looks like 9 and 3 quarters or so. So that would be about 9 and maybe I'll say 9 and 8 tenths. So if someone else estimated uh, 9 and 7 tenths or 9 and 9 tenths, those would also be good estimates. What I'm looking for is for an answer that's definitely between 9 and 10. And I think in this case it's clearly closer to 10 than to 9. So if you said 9 and a half, I would say that was a decent estimate, but I'd want you to refine it a little more to show me that it's closer to 10. Okay, we'll do one more example. 
So the square root of 11. So we'll check our list of square roots that we know, and we're looking for ones that are close to 11. So we're up at the top of the list. Um, there's square root 9, that's quite close, and 16. So we're in this range right there. So let's write that down. Square root of 11 is between square root of 9 and the square root of 16. In other words, between, so root 9 is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, and root 16 is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. So now we're down somewhere here in the number line. And we want to think, well, is root 11 going to be closer to the square root of 9 or closer to the square root of 16? So we can think um, approximately just about 11 and 9 and 16 for a minute to help us figure out how far over it should be. From 9 to 11 is 2. From 11 to 16 is 5. So root 11 is definitely going to be closer to root 9 or 3. And closer to 3. And I think this is a bit less clear how close it should be. Again, because the square roots aren't spread out in the same way that whole numbers are. Maybe about here-ish. So I'm going to put root 11 right there. So let's say about... Hmm, maybe 9 and 3 tenths? 9 and 5 tenths is in the middle somewhere. So let's say maybe 9 and 2 or 3 tenths. Let's say 9 and 3 tenths. All right, I hope that was helpful.